Hey YouTube, this would just be a bit of a simple video about my HP DL385 G5P. Um, I sort of uh, spent a bit of time looking on YouTube about on servers and what different features I have, bits and pieces, overview and I sort of gained a lot of information from that, those sort of videos so I figured I just got myself one so I might as well add to the knowledge base that is YouTube so we'll just go straight into it um, I the power cord is actually plugged in and but it's switched off currently uh, this basically provides earth to the case and therefore if the case is earthed um, ASD, like this is carpet so um, ASD is always concerned with um, any sensitive electronics by having the case earthed when it's plugged in is earthing the case to ground by you touching it is dissipating any static you have so you don't need to have a ESD wrist strap but if you're doing anything major it's always best to have something like that on so um, as, as every other server opens up top cover just comes straight off nice and easy and straight into all the guts um, so as you, as you saw on the front, this has uh, eight two and a half inch drive bays. Um, I only have two blanking slots when I got it, so um, oh, you can see the SAS connectors on the back and more of the same. So it is compatible with up to eight SAS drives. But um, it does have other options to go three and a half inches, but that's not the one I have. Uh, so that's the SAS back plane. You've got your two SAS connectors on the back. Get power connector down here, which I've unplugged uh, when I was playing it around with it earlier ago. And you've got your optical drive, which is just a basically a mini, mini SATA connector, so, which is just standard SATA. Um, it's not standard in the way that, that that's your data connection there and that's actually your power. It's actually a mini it's actually a mini SATA connector that one is. So just, just be mindful of that. It's just a standard data but the power is different. So that's the power that's on there as well. Um standard standard sort of thing, uh, little hot swappable fans. Uh, pretty standard servery sort of stuff. There's six of them in this unit. And coming around to the back, we have got our redundant power supplies. Now this unit is fitted with two 1200 watt power supplies and how they fit 1200 watt power supplies in something like this. Um, my gaming computer which I built, which is six and a bit years old now uh, it's got a Corsair AX1200 power supply in it and that thing would be four times as big as this if not six it is absolutely huge in comparison and yet 1200 watts uh, exactly the same thing uh, almost um, these once you start getting these sort of power in these supplies they're just 12 volt power supplies. So there's actually, you can see the contacts, positive and negative contacts on both sides, and all the tiny little V's. If you can focus on the little V's. Nope, it's not having it. Anyway, so so basically, 12 volt output at 100 amps. 12 volts, 100 amps. Um, obviously, your smaller ones are slightly lower, but 
these are these mine are the 1200 watt power supplies 100 amps straight out and then in the actual server it will have its own local regulations for things like your cpu like any standard motherboard and it'll also have your extra regulations for your 5 volts for your hard drives uh, these ones are hot swappable red tags hot swappable blue don't touch it when it's running pretty simple stuff uh, it's got standard pretty standard IO um, 2 gigabit NIX come standard your management adapter uh, another couple of NIX um, PS2 keyboard mouse serial all the basic sort of stuff uh, this one does have a 4 port gigabit HP uh, NIC in there so that's always handy and you do have a couple of USB ports in the back and your VGA display output so it's all pretty um, it's got enough of what you need it's pretty simple to pull apart uh, you undo one two three four five thumb screws that one <laughs> and it comes out now you have to be careful uh, on these on this I'm not sure about others we have our raid battery as it has a raid card in it so the raid so that's our raid card and that's our NIC card underneath it if you can see so NIC card at the bottom RAID card at the top. Uh, these servers use a riser board and then you have on this board two four-way S uh, four-way PCI Express lanes. Uh, now usually you will have your actual RAID cable that will be going from the RAID That'll be going from the from the RAID card to the back plane, but I've taken that out because it gets in the way. So with that off, and we can take our plastic cover off as well, that shroud that goes over the CPU and directs the air. Um, yeah, there's, when you, when you sort of get into these sorts of things, there's not a great deal on the motherboards. Uh, I'm very used to doing a lot of gaming, high-end sort of gaming machines. Uh, not really, I haven't really done much. I've done almost nothing in servers or workstations. Um, so yeah, just mainly, uh, high-end desktops really. So this is my first sort of dive into servers, the world of servers, so um, so you get your two memory banks for the two processors, so one processor its bank of dual channel memory second processor its own bank of dual channel memory uh, you have to put them in their designated slots as designated on the top cover of the server pretty easy to work out just follow following their guide so put them in right and you should have no problems um, basically uh, VRM so uh, power regulation for the memory power regulation for the CPUs CPU regulation and again memory regulation uh, down in the corner here you have a little USB port so you can uh, install a flash drive and run a operating system off that flash drive. Uh, that's you've got uh, that SATA connector for our optical drive, which is just here. Which, if you look at if you look at just that connector, it's literally just a SATA connector. So you could use a standard SATA cable. I don't know if you can. Let's try it. 
I'll try that and I'll get back to you. We'll come back. We'll come back to that and I'll try it and see if we can fit a stand starter connect. I won't actually boot it up, but we'll see if we can fit one. Um, our front panel indicators, our two connectors for the hard drives. So that'd be interesting to see. And that'll be this is this will be interesting to actually look into for my project on my other video to see if I can get five volts. Hopefully there's five volts on it so I can run standard three and a half inch drives on it and not have to worry about extra buck converters. But we'll see how we go. Um, another interesting thing, uh, this motherboard has provision for a SS for a not SSD, a SD card. So I mine isn't fitted. Um, it's got the pads. That's it's got the pads for it, but it's not fitted. So yeah. So you have to. Yours might be there. Yours might not. Uh, two front side buses. The old school front side bus uh, for your two um, PCI lanes, which you need your riser boards for, you can't just plug a card in there, there's something on there. So, and that's it, there's um, not a great deal in the inside of them, so your basics, and that's it, so that's not, there's no fancy bells and whistles or anything like that, so they're functional and they work great for their intended purpose, so I uh, will see you guys later. So we'll see if we can fit a standard SATA cable straight into that plug. See, so hopefully there's no clearance issues. And that's it. It seats in the connector fine. It's it's loose. It is loose. It's not what you'd call a great connection because um, the cable itself is physically easily movable and there's a lot more play than what there should be but in saying that there is quite a positive a good positive connection of it and it does take a bit of force to pull it out so uh, if you wanted to you could definitely give it a go and plug a cable directly into there all you will need to do is have a SATA power connector. So you will need a SATA connector, which it's a server, it doesn't have. So you have to get creative and come up with a solution.